Shalom, Shalom. Welcome back to Our Hidden History. You're now tuned into Our Hidden History, Hidden History Radio, Radio Show. Hey, y'all. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. What the? Oh, my gosh. gosh. <laughs> Great start, guys. Uh, sorry for the late start. Um, but, yeah, uh, all praises, all praises. We back. Remember, we still dealing with the Arabs. We still going into the Arabs. We're going to prophesy against the Arabs. Right, so we're going through the history, dealing with Ishmael, all right, and all in the, in the um, Ishmael's sons and the Arabs throughout history and how they dealt with us throughout history, all right? So we're going we gonna to take this, we starting from the beginning, we're going to go all the way to the Trans-Saharan Slate, all the way up to today, how, they, how the Arabs is dealing with us today, all right? Um, hey, shout out to Deacon Malafia class yesterday. All praises. All praises. Bye. All praises. Yes, sir. The class was fire. All right. Um, so, let me see. So, let's get into it. Let's get straight into it. Um, last week, we dealt with um, the uh, Nabataeans. <coughs> we dealt with Nabataeans and the uh, confusion with um, Esau saying that uh, Esau is the Arabs and so forth. So we dealt with that confusion. All right, so there shouldn't be no more confusion with that particular uh, topic right there. It should not be no more confusion. We dealt with the fact that the, the Batians, all right, they came in around, what, 4th century B.C. Esau was gone. Esau was already gone, all right? So they used uh, Petra. Petra was the capital of Esau, all right? Once Esau left, the Nabataeans seen, seen it fit to use Petra to go in there to use it as trade route. So they, that's, why they would, that's why they went there, to use it as a trade route. All right? That's the only reason. Now, um, then we dealt with Herod, the confusion with Herod. Hey, pull that back up with Herod. Pull that back up before we get into. <coughs> with Herod, get the Wikipedia with Herod. Got it? Come on, come on, come on. What's going on? Yeah, pull that up. Read that. Herod the Great was a Roman Jewish client king mm -hmm. of the Herodian kingdom of Judea. He is known for his colossal building projects throughout Judea. Go down to the point. Yep, yep, right there. Biography. Herod was born around 72 BCE in Idumea, south of Judea. Mm -hmm. He was the second son of Antipater, the Idumean. So uh, remember, Idumean is a Greek word for Edom. Idumean, I'm going to say it again. Idumea is a Greek word for Edom. Read. A high-ranking official under Ethnarch Hycranus II and Cyprus, a Nabatian Arab princess from Petra in present-day Jordan. Now, I'm going to show you the confusion. Go ahead. Herod's father was by descent an Edomite. That's correct. They're right. Herod by descent was an Edomite. Read. Watch His this. ancestors had converted to Judaism. Uh -huh. Herod was raised as a Jew. Strabo, a contemporary of Herod, held that the Idumeans, whom he identified as of Nabatian origin. When, hey, when it said Herod was raised as a Jew, remember... The Herodian line from uh, from Herod, they went to our schools, right? Give me that in Acts 13 and uh, 1. <clears throat> the book of Acts, chapter 13 and verse 1. Read. Now there were in the church that was at Antioch certain prophets and teachers, as Barnabas and Simeon that was called nigger. Black, go ahead. And Lucius of Cyrene and Manan, which had been brought up with Herod the Tetrarch and Saul. So what it mean he'd been brought up with Herod the Tetrarch and, and Saul? Because why? They went to our schools, our schools of learning. All right. We allowed Esau into our schools of learning. All right. Let's go. Let's go back even even further. How did that happen? How did that happen? Uh, give me um, Maccabees, I think it's first Maccabees, 1038. Let me get that. Hold on, hold on. Yep, 
First Maccabees. You can start at verse 36. <clears throat> first Maccabees. Chapter 1 and verse 36. No, First Maccabees 10. Sorry, chapter 10, verse 36. I will further that there be enrolled among the king's forces about 30,000 men of the Jews. So this is when Simon um, took over. Go ahead. Unto whom pay shall be given as belongeth to all the king's forces. Read. And of them some shall be placed in the king's strongholds. And of also some uh, shall... Read that again. And whom also... Some shall be set over the affairs of the kingdom, which are Where of you trust. At? No, Verse read 37 37. over. Yes, sir. And of them, some shall be placed in the king's strongholds, of whom also shall some be set over the... Nah, of whom also some, some shall. Sorry. Of whom also some shall be set over the affairs of the kingdom, which are of trust. And I will that their overseers and governors be of themselves... And that they live after their own laws. Right, go ahead. Even as the king have commanded in the land of Judea. Verse 38, watch this. And concerning the three governments. So now, concerning the three governments, go ahead. That are added to Judea from the country of Samaria. Let them be joined with Judea, mm -hmm. that they may be reckoned to be under one, nor bound to obey an other authority than the high priest. Right, so... Simon, he was given uh, liberty to do his own thing in Judea, all right? So with that being said, he uh, it says uh, concerning the three governments, so he gained three governments that are added to uh, Judea uh, from the country of Samaria, all right? And it said, uh, let them, be, so Samaria was joined to us, all right, read on. Let them be joined with Read it Ju again, read 38 again. And concerning the three governments... That are added to Judea from the country of Samaria. Let them be joined with Judea, that they may be reckoned to be under one, nor bound to obey other authority than the high priest. Read on. As for Ptolemaeus and the land pertaining. So pretty everybody that was in our land at that time, they was under Simon. They were under us. All right. So they were under the high priest at this time. Everybody. That's why I said added they um unto Simon was added the three governments. All right. So every that was including Idumia. Including the Idumians. So everybody that was in the land at that time, we was under um Simon, under the Maccabees. All right. Go ahead. As for Ptolemaeus. Under the Hasmonean dynasty. Go ahead. As for Ptolemaeus and the land pertaining thereto, I give it as a free gift. To the sanctuary at Jerusalem for the necessary expenses of the sanctuary. Mm -hmm. Moreover, I give every year 15,000 shekels of silver out of the king's account from... I'm sorry, this is not... Uh, this is... Jonathan was still uh, leading at this time. I'm sorry. Not Simon. Jonathan. Go ahead. Moreover, I give every year 15,000 shekels of silver out of the king's account from the places appertaining. And all the overplus, which the officers pay not. All right, that's it. So with, with this happening, Jonathan and Simon, what they did was forced those that was in our land at that time, forced them to follow our laws. If they didn't follow our laws, put them to death. All right? So that's how they started following our laws. That's, that was the conversion. They started converting over to um, our laws and so forth, to our customs. All right? Now go back. Go back to um, Acts 13 and 1. Yes, sir. <clears throat> the book of Acts, chapter 13 and verse 1. Now there were in the church that was at Antioch certain prophets and teachers, as Barnabas and Simeon that was called Nigger, and Lucius of Cyrene, mm -hmm. and Manaean, which had been brought up with Herod the Tetrarch, and Saul. Right, because they converted to keeping our laws. They converted. They went to our schools. They studied. All, everything about us, they studied. All right? Give me Acts 26. The book of Acts, chapter 26 and verse 1. Mm -hmm. Then Agrippa said unto Paul, Thou art permitted to speak for thyself. Then Paul stretched forth the hand and answered for himself. I think myself happy, King Agrippa, because I shall answer for myself this day. Before thee touching all the things whereof I am accused of the Jews, especially 
because I know thee to be expert in all customs and questions which are among the Jews. How do you know that? Because they went to our schools. They studied our language, laws, everything about us. All right? So they, they was uh, at, in our schools of learning. They were also taught. So Esau was in our schools of learning. Okay? So from there, from there. Um, go back to the uh, Wikipedia. Hey, officer, that's why Herod knew about the Messiah that was going to be born. Yep, 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 yep. They, they understood that. He understood the prophecies. He, and learned, so. he learned that in the schools. <clears throat> go back to the um, Wikipedia. Herod's father was by descent an Edomite. His ancestors had converted to Judaism. Herod See that? Was, so now we just gave you the back history of how they converted over to Judaism. Go ahead. Herod was raised as a Jew. Strabo, a contemporary of Herod, held that the Idumeans, whom he identified as of Nabatian origin, constituted the nonsense. Huh? <laughs> Says Strabo, a contemporary of Herod, held that the Idumeans, whom he identified as of Nabatian origin. Nonsense. Confusion. Read. Constituted the majority of the population of Western Judea, where they commingled with the Judeans and adopted their customs. This is a view shared also by some modern scholarly works, which consider Idumeans as of Arab or Nabatian origin. You see that? So... We proved, now give me the uh, page, give me the page that uh, we posted last week. We just doing a little recap on Herod. Remember the Nabatians, the Nabatians came from uh, neighbor, neighbor, neighbor off. Mm -hmm. All right, that was uh, Ishmael's first son. Ishmael's first son. Well, watch this. Herod the king. This was Herod Agrippa the mm first. -hmm. He was the son of Aristobulus, grandson of Herod the Great, and nephew of Herod Antipas. Read. He was born about 10 B.C. and was educated at Rome in the court of the emperor Ty Tiberius. He was an Idumean or Amalekite. See that? So Herod's line, they let you know, came from Amalek. Woo! Herod's whole line is descended from Amalek. All right. Read it again. He, this was Herod Agrippa the first. He was the son of Aristobulus, grandson of Herod the Great, mm -hmm. and nephew of Herod Antipas. He was born about 10 B.C. and was educated at Rome in the court of the Emperor Tiberius. Read. He was an Idumean or Amalekite. He was an Idumean or an Amalekite. Read. One of the hereditary enemies of the Jewish people. You see that? One of the enemies of us. Okay. So Herod was an Idumean or an Amalekite. Herod was an Edomite. He was not a Nabatean. He was not an Arab. All right? So there should be no more confusion on that. Okay? Now, now, now. We're going to switch topics. Move on. Get me uh, the book of Genesis. We're going to do some reading. Scriptures. The book of Genesis, chapter uh, 37. Let's go to Joseph, Joseph, Joseph. <clears throat> Verse 1, officer. Uh, yes. Mm -hmm. Let me see. Uh, 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 uh. Yeah, you go ahead. The book of Genesis, chapter 37 and verse 1. Read. And Jacob dwelt in the land wherein his fathers was a stranger, in the land of Canaan. These are the generations of Jacob. Joseph, being 17 years old, was feeding the flock with his brethren. And the lad was, was with the sons of Belah, Belha, and with the sons of Zipha, his father's wives. And Joseph brought unto his father their evil report. So Joseph always brought the, uh, the evil report of his brothers. Go ahead. Now Israel loved Joseph more than all his children. Mm -hmm. because Joseph, uh, Joseph was his favorite. Go ahead. Because he was the son of his old age, and he made him a coat of many colors. And when his brethren saw that their father loved him more than all his brethren, they hated him and could not speak peaceably unto him. 
And Joseph dreamed the dream, and he told it his brethren, and they hated him yet the more. And he said unto them, Here, I pray you, this dream which I have dreamed. For, behold, we were binding sheaves in the field, and, lo, my sheave arose, and also stood upright. And, behold, your sheaves stood round about, mm -hmm. and made obeisance to my sheaf. And his brothers... Right, so his, his, uh, their sheaves bow down to his sheaf. Go ahead. And his brethren said to him, Shalt thou indeed reign over us? Or shalt thou indeed have dominion over us? And they hated him yet the more before his dream and for his words. And he dreamed yet another dream and told it his brethren and said, Behold, I have dreamed a dream more. And behold, the sun and the moon and the eleven stars made obeisance to me. Right. So the sun and the moon represents Jacob and uh, Rachel. Go ahead. And he told it to his father. And, and the his, eleven stars represents his brothers. Go ahead. And he told it to his father and to his brethren. And his father rebuked him and said unto him, What is this dream that thou hast dreamed? Shall I and thy mother and thy brethren indeed come to bow down ourselves to thee to the earth? And his brethren envied him, but his father observed the saying. And so his, his father, so his father laid up the saying, but his brothers, <laughs> they was more hate. They was hating on him more. Go ahead. And his brethren went to feed their father's flock in Shechem. And Israel said unto Joseph, Do not thy brethren feed the flock in Shechem? Come, and I will send thee unto them. And he said unto him, Here am I. And he said to him, Go, I pray thee, see whether it be well with thy brethren. What verse you at? Verse 14. Read. And he said to him, Go, I pray thee, see whether it be well with thy brethren, and well with the flocks, and bring me word again. So he sent him out. Of the vale of Hebron, and he came to Shechem. And a certain man found him, and behold, he was wandering in the field. And the man asked him, saying, What seekest thou? And he said, I seek my brethren. Tell me, I pray thee, where they feed their flocks. Read. And the man said, They are departed hence, for I heard them say, Let us go to Dothan. And Joseph went after his brethren and found them in Dothan. And when they saw him afar off, even before he came near unto them, they conspired against him to so, slay him. <laughs> they already plotting against Joseph. All right. They see him afar. They see him coming. They're like, look, man, let's, what, what are we going to do with him? Go ahead. And they said one to another, behold, this dreamer cometh. Come now, therefore, and let us slay him and cast him into some pit. Mm -hmm. And we will say, some evil beasts have devoured him. And we shall, and we shall see what will become of his dreams. See, you see the hatred started. You know, it was a thought. You know, they they, they, they was envying him, and they, they was hating on him, okay, because, why? He was the favorite of his father, and he always brought the evil report <laughs> of what, the bro what his brothers was doing. But you see that hatred, now it's starting to turn into something. It's starting to become an action now. Now they want to lay hands on him. They want to kill him, right? Go ahead. And Reuben heard it, and he delivered him out of their hands and said, Let us not kill him. And Reuben said unto them, Shed no blood. But cast him into this pit that is in the wilderness. So they put Joseph into a pit. So Reuben, the only one, he's like, look, man, let's, let's not kill him, all right? Let's just put him into the pit and let's, let's leave him there. Go ahead. And lay no hand upon him, that he might rid him out, that he might rid him out of their hands to deliver him to his, father's, to his father again. And it came to pass, when Joseph would come unto his brethren, that they stripped Joseph out of his coat. So they took that coat off of the many colors. They took it off. Go ahead. His coat of many colors that was on him. Mm -hmm. And they took him and cast him into a pit. And the pit was empty. There was no water in it. And they sat. So the, pit, the pit had no water or nothing in it. Just imagine. Now he's inside of a pit, okay, with nothing in there. No water or nothing. He just in the pit. Go ahead. And they sat down to eat bread. And they lifted up their eyes and looked. And behold. A company of Ishmaelites. A company of who? Ishmaelites. So now there's a company of Ishmaelites, descendants of Ishmael. Okay, go ahead. Came from Gilead with their camels bearing spicery and balm and myrrh, going to carry it down to Egypt. And Judah said unto his brethren, What profit, profit is it if we slay our brother and conceal his blood? Read. Come. And let us sell him to the Ishmaelites. So his, now Judah thought is, yo, let's just sell him to the Ishmaelites. Let's just, just sell him. Let's not kill him. We just sell him to the Ishmaelites. And the blood, we won't, you know, the blood will be off our hands. All right, let's not kill him. Go ahead. And let not our hand be upon him. 
For he is our brother Read. and our flesh, and, bre and his brethren were content. Then there passed by Midianites, merchantmen. So now Midianites pass by. Go ahead. Now, the Midianites come from, uh, give me that, Abraham's wife, Keturah. Midian knights come from Abraham's wife, Keturah. The book of Genesis, chapter 25 and verse 1. Then again, Abraham took a wife, and her name was Keturah. And she bare him Zimran, and Jokshan, and Midian, and Midian. Right, and Midian, and Midian, the Midianites. All right, so they're also considered Arabs as well, because why? They, they all dwelt in uh, the area today known as Saudi Arabia. So they all dwelt in that area, and they all generalized them as Arabs okay so even so and think Ishmael became the majority over there so you'll see a lot it says Ishmael Midian and so forth but the um but they all was recognized as Arabs okay go back Genesis chapter 37 and verse 28 then because you also go back go back go back go back to um Genesis real quick we use that Genesis 25 mm-hmm Genesis 25, verse 2. And she bare him Zimran, uh -huh. and Jokshan, and Medan, Read. and Midian, and Ishbak, uh -huh. and Shua. And Jokshan begot Sheba, and Dedan. So Dedan, Jok uh, Jokshan, Midian, they were all seen as Arabs. Because they, all, they all dwelt in that land. They all dwelt in the land. So they were all seen as generally Arabs. All right? But we dealing with the sons of Ishmael right now. Dealing with the sons of Ishmael. Okay, let's go back. Genesis chapter 38 and verse 28. 37 verse 28. Then there passed by Midianites, merchantmen, and they drew and lifted up Joseph out of the pit and sold Joseph to the Ishmaelites for 20 pieces of silver. So now the Midianites came and they sold Joseph. They took him out of the pit and then they uh, sold him to Ishmael. All right, read on. And they brought Joseph into Egypt. And they did what? And brought Joseph into Egypt. And they brought Joseph into Egypt. Read on. And Reuben returned unto the pit. And behold, Joseph was not in the pit. And his and he rent his clothes. So now they come back to the pit. Because remember, they had the plan to what? Sell him to the Ishmaelites. But he's not in the pit now. So they're like, oh, snap, where he at? But Midian already came and took him out of the pit and sold him to Ishmael. Now, the Bible is abbreviated. Let's think, let's, let's uh, read between the lines. What may have happened? When, uh, why didn't Midian take him out the pit and, you know, see if he's okay? And the natural thing to do is take him out the pit, you know, like, damn, why are you in the pit? Give him some water or something, send him on his way, right? But instead, they chose to make him a slave. Why did they do that? Why did they choose to make him a slave? Because, remember, you um, why they choose to sell him to uh, Ishmael and so forth? But you gotta understand, they probably knew about the history, right? Because they sold him to Ishmael, and Ishmael sold him down into uh, Egypt. But just speculation, they probably knew about the history from Isaac and Ishmael. You understand? So they probably had, they probably carried that hatred all the way back from then. So they were like, "Yo, you a Hebrew? I'm just, I'm just thinking, I'm just reading between the lines. What may have happened? Why, why didn't they just take him out the pit, try to see if he okay, give him some water?" And send them on his way. Nah, they said, nah, we're gonna make you you, you you gonna be a slave. We're gonna take you down to Egypt and sell you. Right? Go ahead, read it again. Verse 28. Then there passed by Midianites, merchantmen, mm -hmm. and they drew and lifted up Joseph out of the pit and sold Joseph to the Ishmaelites for 20 pieces of silver. So they sold him for 20 pieces of silver. Right? Go ahead. And they brought Joseph into Egypt. And Reuben returned unto the pit, and behold, Joseph was not in the pit, and he rent his clothes. And he returned unto his brethren and said, The child is not, and I, whither shall I go? And they took Joseph's coat and killed a kid of the goats, and dipped the blood in the blood, dipped the coat in the blood. And they sent the coat of many colors, and they brought it to their father and said, This have we found. No, now, whether it be thy son's coat or no. And he knew it and said, it is my son's coat. And evil beasts have devoured him. What verse you at? Verse oh, 33. I see. 33, go ahead. Joseph is without doubt rent in pieces. 
And Joseph rent his clothes and put sackcloth upon his loins and mourned for his son many days. And all his sons and all his daughters rose up to comfort him, but he refused to be comforted. And he said, For I will go down into the grave unto my son mourning. Mm -hmm. Thus his father wept for him. And the Midianites sold him into Egypt unto Potiphar, an officer of Pharaoh's and captain of the guard. See, now it's saying uh, Midianites. That's why I said they, they generalize it as the Arabs. Or they just said Ishmael because Ishmael took over the territory of Arabia. All right. Now, let's move up in history. Let's move up in history. Give me Qadar. Hey, go back to that page. Uh, um, I think it's called the Exposition. Go to the Telegram real quick. Blow it up. I think, that, yeah, from 1788. Go to the next page. Blow it up. Go down to Qadar. Let's deal with Qadar. 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 Read that. Qadar is the second son of Ishmael. And the posterity of this man and their country are reckoned in Arabia by Isaiah. Hey, hey, just keep in mind, from Joseph, you will see that Ishmael was always raiding and selling us. All right. You see that Ishmael always had a hand in making us slaves. All right. Throughout the history, as we as we move on throughout this history. All right. So we just we just read about Joseph uh, being sold by them. So now throughout history, you're going to see the same thing occurring over and over with Ishmael, with the Arabs. Read. Uh, in Arabia by Isaiah, chapter 21, verse 13, 16 and 17. And they are so well known to be the Arabians that the Arabic language is most frequently in Jewish writings called the language of Kedar. So the, called the language of Kedar. Now, Kedar here is spelled with a K, and the scripture is spelled with a K, but it's also spelled with a Q. All right, we'll show you that when we get to Wikipedia. Go ahead. These are the people whom Pliny names Sidrisi, or Sidersi, or oh, Sidre, excuse me. Yeah, it's an R. Go ahead. And mentions them along with the Nabasians as near unto them. And indeed, they dwelt in the same country, Arabia Petraea, and in tents, living by pasturage. Hence, they are sometimes called Sinites. Mm -hmm. And mention is made of the tents of Kadar in Kant, chapter 1, verse 6. Where, the, are, you at? Where are you at? Kadar and, and Kant. Oh, okay, okay. Go ahead. Uh, these are the Sinite Arabs called Saracens by Emma. Why are you reading so chopped up? Called Saracens by <laughs> Emmaus. Yeah, Emma yeah, go ahead. Marcel Don't worry, you almost done. You almost done. Work yes. Do it, brother. Do it. <laughs> <laughs> Two other sons of nigga. Ishmael follow. Congratulations. Of whom, <laughs> go ahead. of whom no mention is made elsewhere, nor are there any traces of their names unless the Agubinai Placed by Ptolemy near Arabia Felix. All right, all praises, all, all praises. praises. Hey, um, hey, give me this link on, on the Telegram with Kadar. Kadar. Hey, do we have the uh, the Zondervan? Yeah, we have that. Kadar. Tense of Kadar. Hey, give me Song of Solomon 1 and 5 while you get that. Y'all have it? Yeah, yeah. All right, bring that up. Read that. Kadar. Matter of fact, uh, read Song of Solomon 1 and 5 first. The book of Song of Solomon, chapter 1 and verse 5. Read. I am black, but comely, O ye daughters of Jerusalem, as the tents of Kedar, as the curtains of Solomon. You see that? So it's King Solomon said, I am black. As the tents, read it again. I am black, but comely, O ye daughters of Jerusalem, mm -hmm. as the tents of Kedar, as the curtains of Solomon. So King Solomon said, I am black and handsome, the tents of Kedar. All right, so, all right, read that. Kedar. Kedar. Probably either mighty or dark. Mighty or what? Dark. Mighty or dark. Dark. All right, now. Read on, read on. One of the twelve sons of Ishmael, 
son of Abram by Hagar, uh-huh. the tribe which descended from him and their territory. They were for the most part nomads. Right. Nom- nomadic meaning dis- they, they was always moving. Go ahead. Raising sheep, but sometimes intruding into villages. But sometimes doing what? Intruding into villages. <laughs> so, but sometimes intruding into villages. Dang. Yeah, that's how we're going we gonna to read about the Arab. Bring it out. How they was always raiding and intruding into villages. Bring it out. We have a text? We have a text? Oh, oh, you, you, all right, go ahead. Okay. Their territory was in the northern part of the Arabian Maybe. desert. Right, so, hey, pull up a map real quick. Pull up a map and put, uh, put location of Kedar. Pull up a map, location of Kedar. They were always intruding into, all these play a clue into the, uh, the history. Bro, you put Kedar. Like, rate you. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Kedar. It's an ease. It's ease. Uh, no, yeah, there you go. Thank you. That's a good, yep, yep, you can blow that up. All right, so look, this is the territory of uh, Kedar. All right? As you can see, his brothers, Tima, you have the, the uh, Dedanites, all right, from Dedan. Like I said, they all dwelt in this area. But the uh, the most known Arabian tribes, Arab tribes, was Kedar, was Ishmaelites, was the sons of Ishmael, Nabal, uh, Nabal Joff and Kedar. All right, they were the most known, the most popular in in the area. All right, they took over. They were like the majority. Remember, give me where he said he's gonna uh, the most high is gonna make them twelve princes. The book of Genesis, chapter 17 and verse 20. And as for Ishmael, I have heard thee. Behold, I have blessed him and will make him fruitful and will multiply him exceedingly. Twelve princes shall he beget and I will make him a great nation. You see that? So that's why even even the other Arabs, they all come up under Ishmael. Because why? Ishmael became a great nation. The Most High multiplied them exceedingly. Kedar, Nabajoth, Tima. Um, Abdi, uh, what's it, Abdiel, all right, read it again. And as for Ishmael, I have heard thee. Behold, I have blessed him, and will make him fruitful, and will multiply him exceedingly. Twelve princes shall he beget, and I will make him a great nation. But my covenant will I establish with Isaac, which Sarah shall bear unto thee at this set time in the next year. Right, so go back to the map. You about to say something? Oh. <laughs> Go back to the map. So you see that uh, that territory, northern Arabia, Kedar, was situated in northern northern uh, Arabia. All right? Northern Arabia. Okay. All right, you can drop that. Give me that link now with uh, Kedar called, uh, what were the tents of Kedar made from? What were the tents of Kedar, Kedar made from? Uh, right. Go go down, go down. I just want to get straight to the point. You, you can read right there. Song of Solomon, chapter 7, verse 5. No, no, go down. Let me see. Get to the point. Right here. That's all. This is what I want. That's all I want. The other two references to the bride's hair, chapter 4, verse 1, and chapter 6, verse 5, describe it as flowing and presumably black, like the goats from which the tents of K- Kedar were made. You see that? Go ahead. Kedar, whose name probably meant dark... dark. Or swarthy, swarthy was the second son of Ishmael. What does swarthy mean? Go to swarthy real quick. Look at the definition of swarthy. Dark or swarthy? Swarthy means dark skinned. Right? Yeah. If you like tall, dark, and handsome men, you find a swarthy complexion attractive. You see that? Oh. That's what King Solomon was saying. Right. Read that again. Swarthy means dark-skinned. 
If you like tall, dark, and handsome men, you find a swarthy complexion attractive. attractive. You see that? Huh? Yes, sir. Swarthy, swarthy beat. <laughs> all praise, all praise. I hold my comment. <laughs> <laughs> no, bring it out. Bring it out. <laughs> it's, it's too explicit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> all praise, all praise. All praise. Now read that Song of Solomon again. Song of Solomon, chapter 1 and verse 5. I am black, but comely, O ye daughters of Jerusalem, as the tents of Kedar, as the curtains of Solomon. As the curtains of Solomon. So King Solomon pretty much telling you I'm tall, dark, and handsome. What are you saying? I'm swarthy. I'm swarthy. All right. Now, let's get me the Kedarites with a Q. It's spelled Q-E-D-A-R. Kedarites. Kedarites. We're going to deal with Kedar for a minute. Kedar writes. The Kedar hey, writes. Before you do that, give me First Kings. First Kings 10 15. First Kings chapter 10, verse 15. Book of First Kings, chapter 10, and verse 15. You start at uh, you start at thirteen, verse thirteen, and King Solomon gave unto the queen of Sheba all her desire, whatsoever she asked, beside that which Solomon gave her of his royal bounty. So she turned and went her own went to her own country, she and her servants. Uh -huh. Now, the weight of the gold that came to Solomon in one year was six hundred three score and six talents of gold. Damn. Right. Beside that he had of the merchantmen and of the traffic of the spice merchants and of all the kings of Arabia uh -huh. and of the governors of the country. So King Solomon from it says besides that he had of the merchantmen and of the traffic of the spice merchants. So the Arabs were known as spice merchants. All right. They was always trading nomadic. They was just going back and forth trading. Okay, between Arabia, they was coming through our land. They was all all the way up to Assyria. They was always a, they was always trading. All right, merchantmen selling spices and so forth. Read it again. Beside that, he had of the merchantmen and of the traffic of the spice merchants and of all the kings of Arabia and of the governors of that country. Read. And King Solomon made two hundred targets of beating gold. 600 shekels of gold went to one target, and he made 300 shields of beaten gold. Three pound, three pound of gold went to one shield, and the king put them in the house of the forest of Lebanon. Right. So that's, that's all I want on that. Give me uh, Second Chronicles now. Second Chronicles 17.11 with Jehoshaphat. Second Chronicles, chapter 17 and verse 11. Also, some of the Philistines brought Jehoshaphat presents and tribute silver. Now, hey, re read on, read on, read on. And the Arabians brought him flocks, 7,000 and 700 hey, rams. I'm sorry, start at verse 9. Start at verse 9. Verse 9. And they taught in Judah and had the book of the law, and the Lord was with them and went about, and went about throughout right, all so the... the Lord so the Lord was sending out his men, his prophets, to go around and teach, all right, teach all around Israel, teach the law all around Israel, all right? So he was sending them out on foot to go teach the law in Israel, okay? Go ahead. And went about throughout all the cities of Judah. Same thing we doing today. Okay, go ahead, read. And taught the people. And, the fear and they the taught the people, go ahead. And the fear of the Lord fell upon all the kingdoms of the land that were round about Judah, so that they made no war against Jehoshaphat. Right. So there was so Jehoshaphat reigned in a peaceable time. He reigned in a peaceable time. Go ahead. Also, some of the Philistines brought Jehoshaphat presents and tribute silver. Uh huh. And the Arabians brought him flocks, seven thousand and seven hundred rams, and seven thousand and seven hundred he goats. You see that? So keep in mind the Philistines and the Arabs. 
right. keep them in mind. Right? Hey, here, they, we, they, we, they, under, they under us. They paying us tribute. Okay, since King Solomon. Since the days of King Solomon. Since the days of King David. All right, they're paying us tribute. All right, but keep them in mind. You'll see why. Keep them in mind. Philistines, Ham and Ishmael. Ham and Ishmael. Now, from there, get me um, give me the Kadarites. The Kadarites, the Wikipedia. The Kadarites were a largely nomadic ancient Arab tribal confederation centered in their capital, Damat al-Jandal, and the al-Jaf province. Attested from the 9th century BC, the Kadarites formed a powerful po uh, polity which expanded its territory over the course of the 9th to 7th centuries BC to cover a large area in northern Arabia stretching from Transjordan in the west to the western borders of Babylonia in the east. Before right. later. So we just showed you a map of them uh, covering the whole northern Arabia. Go ahead before later moving westwards during the 6th to 5th centuries B.C. to consolidate into a kingdom stretching from the eastern limits of the Nile Delta in the west to Transjordan in the east and covering much of southern Judea. Go down. Go ahead. The Qadarites played an important role in the history of the Levant and of North Arabia, where they enjoyed close relations with the nearby Canaanite and Aramean states and became important participants in the trade of spices and aromatics imported into the Fertile Crescent and the Mediterranean world from South Arabia. So those kings of Arabia were for, well, who? Uh, from Kedar. They were the ones that was trading. You see, read that part again about the spices. And became important participants in the trade of spices. You see that? So they became important participants in the trade of spices. Remember, we just read during King Solomon's time, it said the kings of Arabia, spice merchants. Those spice merchants uh, was Kedar. Go ahead. And aromatics imported into the Fertile Crescent and the Mediterranean world from South Arabia. Having engaged in both friendly ties and hostilities. I would say majority uh, Qadar rights. I'll say majority Qadar rights. I'll leave it majority. Go ahead. Having engaged in both friendly ties and hostilities with the Mesopotamian powers, such as the Neo-Assyrian and Neo-Babylonian empires, the Qadarites eventually became integrated within the structure of the Persian Archimedes Empire. Uh-huh. Read. Closely associated with the Nabatians. So they were closely associated with the Nabatians. Read. The Kedarites might have eventually been absorbed by them. So Kedar became pretty much the majority to the point that they absorbed a good majority of the Nabatians as well. Probably all the tribes that were, uh, all the other Arabian tribes that were surrounding them, Kedar pretty much probably absorbed all of them. Go ahead. The Kedarites also feature within the scriptures of Abrahamic religions where they appear in the Hebrew Bible and the Quran as the epi uh, eponymous descendants of Qadar, the second son of Ishmael, himself the son of Abraham. Within Islamic tradition, some scholars claim that the Islamic prophet Muhammad was descended from Ishmael through Qadar. Right. Go down. Let me see. Let me see. Hey, read that in the Hebrew Bible the Qadarites are referred to. In the Hebrew Bible. The Kedarites are referred to in Hebrew, Kedar, meaning black and swarthy. You see that? Meaning black and swarthy. Meaning black and swarthy. Read on. And reference to the color of their tents. Right. In reference to the color of their tents. Right. All right. So let's go out of that. Go out of that. Go out of that. Still dealing with Kedar. Hey, go back, go back to the Kadar rights real quick, to that Wikipedia. I think I missed something. Go back. Go all the way up. All right, go down, go down. Uh, all right, give me uh, uh, Gendibu, Gendibu. Uh, G-I-N-D-I-B-U. G-I-N-D-I-B-U. Hey, officer, what you was mentioning, too, about um, Ishmael being a seller of spices, I'm not sure if you ever seen the movie uh, Dune. 
It's a newer movie. No, nah, I haven't seen that. I haven't okay. Seen it. For for those that have seen it, when they go into that that world, it's supposed to be a uh, Arab land where all of them have got their hair wraps on and everything like that. The thing that they're known for is selling spices on that movie too. So it shows in that as well. All praises. Gindi boo. Gindi. You got, you got some? Uh, yeah, it's about the Lambatians, how they uh, help uh, sack Jerusalem with Rome. Okay, okay. But whenever you get to it, I'll hop in. Wait, where is he? It's uh, at the bottom of that article, but I don't want to. Damn, wait, Rome? Yeah. So uh, remember uh, Aretas in uh, Second Corinthians right, right. Uh, 11, where Paul was trying to hide from our wicked people who were trying to kill him. And Aretas had the whole city on lock to oh, yeah. try to get Paul, and Paul had to. Right. So that Aretas, he's the great grandson of the Aretas that you read about in Maccabees. Yeah, right. we gonna get to all so, that. We gonna yeah, get to all so. that. Yeah, yeah, save that for, yeah, for later. Later, later yeah. Yeah, yeah. I'm just putting it on there now. All right, all praise, all praise. So we have it. Gendibu, Gendibu, read that real quick. Gendibu was a Kadarite Arab king. So Gendibu was a Kadarite Arab king. All right, what time period? Let's read. Uh, Gendibu ruled over an Arab kingdom located in the northeastern parts of present-day Jordan uh-huh. on the eastern borders of the Assyrian province of Harina, Haran, established by Tiglath-Pileser III in 732 B.C. Go down. I don't want the Battle of Kakar. We're going to deal with that. Let me see here. It's not much. On Gendibu like that. Go go back up. 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 All right. Re, uh, let me see. Let me see if I want that. Hold on. Yeah, you know what? Go ahead. Read that. Battle of Kikar. Um, go... Yeah, yeah, you can read that. Go ahead. Uh, Battle of Kakar. Although Gindibu's kingdom was not set on the Assyrian campaign routes and therefore was not in danger of being attacked by the Assyrians, the rise of the Neo-Assyrian power in the 9th century BCE meant that the desert and border routes where Gindibu had economic interests were under threat of Assyrian interference, due to which he allied... So this is when the time... This is when the Assyrians first started making their campaigns. All right. First started making their campaigns. Now, this is recorded history of the first time you hear of any Arab king's name. Okay. Recorded history of the first Arab king's name. Go ahead. Due to which he allied with his powerful neighbors, the kings Barhadad II of Aram Damascus and Ahab of Israel against the Assyrian Empire. Fearing disruptions by the Assyrians, Gindibu led 1,000 camel camelry troops at the Battle of Battle of Kakar in 853 BCE on the side of the alliance led by Aram Damascus and Israel against Shalmaneser III of Assyria. Right. So now, give me the, uh, go to the Assyrian side now. Go to Assyrian, go to the Assyrian, uh, the Neo-Assyrian Empire. Yep, click on that, yep. So Ahab was involved in this, all right? When our forefathers Ahab was involved in this war right here. Go ahead. The Neo-Assyrian Empire was the fourth and penultimate stage of ancient Assyrian history, beginning with the ascension of Adad-Narari II in 911 B.C. The Neo-Assyrian Empire grew to dominate the ancient Near East throughout much of the 8th and 7th centuries B.C. Go down. Go down, go down, let me see. Keep going. All right, you can drop that one. Go to the Battle of Kakar. Go to the Battle of Kakar. The Battle of Kakar 
was fought in 853 BC when the army of the Neo-Assyrian Empire, led by Emperor Shalmaneser III, encountered an allied army of 11 kings at Kakar, led by Hadadezer, called an Assyrian called in Assyria Adad Idir, and possibly to be identified with King Ben-Hadad II of Aram Damascus right. and, and right. Ahab, king of Israel. This battle fought during the 8, 854 to 846 BC Assyrian conquest of Aram is notable for having a larger number of combatants than any previous battle and for being the first instance in which some peoples enter recorded history, such as the, the Arabs. Arabs. So what they say saying is the Arabs, remember, you, he, uh, we're going to read the um, inscription that he wrote. This is the first time that an Arab king's name was mentioned. All right, so that's why it's saying, and for being the first instance in which some peoples entered uh, recorded history, such as the Arabs. So they're saying the Arabs, this is their first time entering in recorded history, but it's not their first time entering in recorded history. It's the first time that an Arab king name is mentioned. Okay, read that part again. This battle fought during the 854 to 846 B.C. Assyrian conquest of Aram is notable for having a larger number of combatants than any previous battle and for being the first instance in which some peoples enter recorded history, such as the Arabs. Uh -huh. The battle is recorded on the Kirk monoliths, using a different recension of the Assyrian eponym list, which, excuse me, would put the battle's date at 854 B.C. Right. Click on the uh, Stella, the um, inscription real quick. Click on the inscription. Blow that up. All right. So it's recorded here. All right. All those kings, including our king Ahab, all right, uh, King Ben-Hadad II and uh, Gendibu the Arab, all right, the Ishmaelite, are recorded on this inscription that went to battle with the uh, Assyrian Shabbat the III. Now, we can't understand what this says, right? So give me the page, give me the page, give me the book, go to the telegram. Give me the telegram real quick to pay before we go to break. On the telegram. <laughs> Read that. Archaeology and the Bible by George A. Barton. Written in 1816. And where? Oh, go back, go back, go back, go back. And written. Philadelphia American Sunday School Union in 1816. <laughs> off a of chestnut. Chestnut. That ain't far from me. It ain't far from me. Woo! Dang. Yep. All right, go to, go to the next page. We just catching up right now. Dang. 200 years later. 200 years later, man. Read that. The eponym. Read the, uh, the following extracts. The following extracts give the accounts in Shalmaneser's own words. Shalmaneser III. This is his own words. That Stella, that inscription that we just put up. This is what he wrote on there. It's been translated. Go ahead. In the eponym year of Dan Ashur, 854 B.C., month Aru, 14th day, I departed from the city of Nineveh. Uh -huh. I crossed the river Tigris. To the city, Kakar, I approached. Kakar, his royal city, I destroyed. I devastated. I burned with fire. Uh -huh. 1,200 chariots, 1,200 horsemen, 20,000 men of Hadadi. Hadadidri, Ben-Hadad of Damascus. So that's the Ben-Hadad of Damascus. Hey, we go, we go read about it after break. That's the same Ben-Hadad in the scriptures. Uh, We're going to read about it when we come back from break. Go ahead. 700 chariots, 700 horsemen, 10,000 men of Irhulina, the, Hamath, the Hamathite, 2,000 chariots, 10,000 men of Ahab. Now, he mentioned 10,000 men of Ahab. Ahab was king of the northern kingdom. That was the, week, the one that married... Uh, the Hamite Jezebel. Right? Go ahead. The Israelite. 500 men of the Kien, K in Cilicia. 1,000 men of the Musrian. 10,000 chariots. 10,000 men of Irkatan. 200 men of Matinu Bali. The Arvadite. 200 men of the Usetian. 30 chariots. 10,000 men of Abdu Bali. The Sh Shianian. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 1,000 camels of Gendibu. This is 1,000 camels of Gendibu. Read. The Arabian. The Arabian. 
1,000 men of Basa, son of Rehubi, the Ammonite, the Ammonite. These 12 kings he took as his helpers, and they came to make battle and war against me with the exalted power. So Behadad took these 12 kings as his helper to come against Shalmaneser III, and he destroyed all of them, including our um, Ahab. Go ahead. With the exalted power which Ashur the Lord had given me, with powerful weapons which Nurgle, who goes before me, had presented me, I fought with them. From Kakar to Gilzan, I accomplished their defeat. Hey, go back to what he said with the exalted power which the Ashur, which, which Ashur, go ahead. With the exalted power which Ashur the Lord had given me. Uh -huh. With powerful weapons which Nurgle, who goes before me, had presented me. I fought with them. From Kakar to Gilzan, I accomplished their defeat. Go ahead, finish up. 14,000 of their troops I overthrew with arms. Like Adad the first, oh, like Adad, I poured out a flood upon them. I flung afar their corpses. I filled the plain with their mighty troops. With weapons, I made their blood to flow. The field was too narrow for smiting them. The broad plain was used for burying their bodies. With their corpses, I dammed the, or the Orantes as with a dam. In that battle, their chariots, their horsemen, their horses, harnesses, and yokes I took. Right. All right. So what I want to show you is that he mentioned Gendibu, the uh, the Arab, the Kadarite. So I want to show you that as well. And we are also mentioning there uh, Ahab of Northern Kingdom. Okay. It is in the description. Go ahead. But before we go and break, you mind if I uh, bring out something? Yep, yep. Quick? Go ahead. Hey, go to um, Second Chronicles 18. Reverse one to two. Uh, were you going to get that or no? You might be jumping the gun, man. If, you, if I'm jumping the gun, leave it. Go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. Bring it out. Okay, just going with you talking about the Battle of Kadarites. Exactly what you were just reading about. Let's see when that battle took place. Read uh, 2 Chronicles 18, 1 to 2. 2 Chronicles chapter 18, verse 1. Now Jehoshaphat had riches and honor and abundance and joint affinity with Ahab. So Jehoshaphat was the king, was yep, the king yep. over Judah. What, you was about to bring this out later? No? no, no, go ahead, go ahead. You bring it up. Bring okay. It up. He joined affinity with Ahab. Read the next verse. And after certain years, he went down to Ahab to Samaria. And Ahab killed sheep and oxen for him in abundance mm -hmm. and for the people that he had with him and persuaded him to go up with him to Ramoth Gilead. So he persuaded Jehoshaphat to come up with him to Ramoth Gilead. Why? To go to war. Click the link that I just posted in the group, Ramoth Gilead. Read that first part, and then we're going to jump down. Ramoth Gilead was a Levitical city and city of refuse east of the Jordan River in the Hebrew Bible, mm -hmm. also called Ramoth and Gilead. Mm -hmm. uh, it Actually, was, go ahead, hit uh, biblical events, and I'll read where it says it appears. It appears to have been lost to Syria, Aram, Damascus, during the battles between the northern kingdom of Israel and Syria, uh -huh. as Ahab, king of Israel, proposed to go to battle to win it back. This is the exact uh, event that we was just reading about. This is when Ahab persuaded Jehoshaphat to come to war against him. This is where Ahab was killed later on in that war. So this is that same Aram Damascus that you were just bringing out, Ramoth Gilead. Right. That was it, Austin. All right. Hey, so we're going to take a quick break. All right. We'll take a quick break. Hey, you could call us or text us at 267-702-6121. All right, you could call or text us at 267-702-6121. We'll see you after the break. Most high in Christ, bless Israel, Bishop Daniel. Some of you call me the general, and I appreciate that. The gospel hasn't been preached everywhere as yet. There's much work to be done. As we know, the 12 tribes of Israel, like James 1 and 1 said, were scattered throughout all nations. I need some volunteers. I need some of you mighty men to stand up. You deacons, captains, officers, soldiers, stand up. I need volunteers to go on this mission. With Passover right around the corner, IUIC will now be presenting Passover Boom Cards, the ideal tool used to teach our prophets and princesses the biblical history of Passover. They are also available in English and Spanish, so don't hesitate to grab your very own deck of Boom Cards at www.boomlearning.com forward slash author forward slash IUIC.
expectations for the film is to leave with us a visual imprint on why we need to continue to make more films like what you see coming out of IUIC. Joseph's Dream was, a, was, was another good example. It gives, it gives the visual imagery. That's very important. We, we must be able to see things in our mind before we can act upon it. So what these films do, it actually puts a vision in our mind and it gives us something to step towards rather than somebody just quote unquote telling the story. Now we got visual aid that helps us in, in our tenacious drive towards the truth of the Bible. And that's good for our children as well. Israel United in Christ from corners to countries gathering the 12 tribes of Israel. We gonna take the world. A black brother got mad and tried to attack Deacon Malachi. Yeah, we're leaving it though. We're leaving it inside this uh, basilica. Mm -hmm. so we're inside the basilica. Nothing but Edomites around. The only Israelite there besides us is a brother that's deceived by false image of Cedric Boisier. And he has a picture up there of Cedric Boisier. He's on the ground, so we go to take pictures of him. So Deacon Malachi goes up to him and says, Hey, bro, you know Jesus ain't white, right? He get mad and get up and push Deacon Malachi. <laughs> get mad and get angry. So we had to jump in between them. The whole scuffle going on. Eat might running out there. Ah! They scared. <laughs> deep, man. Deep. I pray the most high. The spirit was on him, man. <laughs> This is Jesus Christ. Now, for next time, okay, imagine for you in a Congo. This image came to the Congo. This image over here, and this is what's happened to the people. It's because they hid in the past, they came out and cast the bishop on top of the dragon's rock. We never backing down the portion lines like what's all the cap about? We the new era of men and we standing up, bringing up God's words you ain't what to chat about. Heathens and demons and snakes are attacking now. But they hate us and they hate the boot bangers. Our secrets they hid in the past, they came out and cast. The bishop don't show us the dragon's route. We have my people, we tracking down. Too fast to be stopped, got the spazzing out. We were marching and sinking that thunder shot. The time is that crash is coming down. Heating up, you more than the smoke, you know that the portions you travel out. It's true, it's getting the brood that we in the building that's secret. The book of Isaiah, chapter 11 and verse 11. And it shall come to pass in that day that the Lord shall set his hand again the second time 
to recover the remnant of his people, which shall be left from Assyria and from Egypt and from Pathros and from Cush and from Elam and from Shinar and from Hamath and from the islands of the sea. Australia is one of the islands of the sea. You have many other islands near Australia. For example, you have Vanuatu, you have Papua New Guinea, you have the Solomon Islands. All of these are islands of the sea, places where the Israelites in the last days will be scattered. Why? Because they are suffering God's judgment. Because they How are these men calling themselves the sons of God? Israel United in Christ, from corners to countries, gathering the 12 tribes of Israel. We gonna take the world. Hey, you most high in Christ, bless Israel, Bishop of that. Yeah, some of you call me the general, and I appreciate that term, but today we're gonna find out if I'm a true general or not. Matter 28, Amru al Masihi bit Tadibi Habu ila Kulil Umam, wa Amadu hum bismil Abu Libni wa Ruhi al Quds, wa Alemu hum any and Tabi hu behold the mother Yama Usika befali he come an alam, for in a twelve Kabila ten min Israel, Kama Kala Yakub one wa one, Muntashira ton fi Jamia and Hai il Alam Jamia al Buldan, Mintijara til Rakir, Janubus Sahra il Kubra, ila Tijara til Rakir, Abra Mohit al Atlasi, Hassanan, Senate Amar Madalik. Das Evangelium wurde überall gepredigt, doch es gibt noch viel zu tun. Okay, im Tu. Korintherbrief Kapitel 10, rund um Vers 16. Ich glaube, Paulus hat gesagt, man solle das Evangelium in Regionen jenseits seiner selbst predigen und sich nicht mit der Arbeit anderer Männer rühmen. Wir wollen nicht damit prahlen, dass kein anderes Lager so hoch arbeitet, dass wir auf eine Mission berufen werden. Wir müssen diese Mission erfüllen. ヒープ、ヒープ、ヒープ、ヒープ、ヒープ、ヒープ、ヒープ、ヒープ、ヒープ、ヒープ、ヒープ、ヒープ、ヒープ、ヒープ、ヒープ、ヒープ、ヒープ
रामचे का ही लोकी थे आए तो ऑस्ट्रेलिया मध्य ठीक है न्यूगिनी इंडोनेशिया सुमात्रा वियतनाम ठीक है या प्रदेश मध्य है तिस्रायली पाया नहीं सत्य सुमार्ता शिक्षमिली पाहिं जे कि आप लोग लोकना या प्रदेश आत विकुर ले लिया है स्तब्ध भी आप अच्छी दुम मेंटो दु कमेंस सुबह सारियानो जिस क्रावस allora Israele, ho bisogno di alcuni volontari. Ho bisogno che alcuni di voi uomini potenti si alzino in piedi. Diaconi, capitani, ufficiali, soldati, alzatevi. Ho bisogno di volontari per questa missione. Shalom, brothers and sisters, most high in Christ, bless. We want to thank you all for following Isaiah 11 ministry. We're here to inform you that the local Sabbath classes will now be available in all languages. All of the classes from the bishops, deacons, and captains will now be available in all languages. All right, shalom, shalom. We back. We are back. All right, so we gonna jump back into it. We were dealing with Shamanassar the third. This is when the Mosai gave the Assyrians the power to come against us. Against the, uh, this is when they got their power. All right, so um, go back to the page. 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 All right, let's. Re um, let me see. Go up. Go up. Go up. Go up. Go up. So we just read the inscription, what was on the inscription that Shamanassar the Third wrote. All right, so let's let's go to uh, Shamanassar the Third real quick. Click on that Wikipedia, Shamanassar the Third. Remember, this is the Battle of Kakar. Remember, don't forget the thought. This is the first time that an Arab name, Arab king's name, was mentioned. All right, that's why we're harping on this battle right here. Okay, His, this is the first time an Arab king um, name was mentioned, which was Gendabu, who provided. 1,000 camels to the battle. Now, uh, somebody say something real quick. Somebody say something. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> hey, because I thought of a book, man. Somebody just real quick, real quick, real quick. Go ahead, I'll say you can. Yeah, you can bring up. You can bring up what you had. Yeah. It's early, though, in the game, but we'll bring it back up later. Nah, man. He's do muddy the waters. <laughs> <laughs> what does that even mean? I don't know. I don't even know what that means. Confusion. That's what that means. Uh, maybe you got hand off you got kin terms. <laughs> uh 
All right, read Shalmaneser the third real quick. Shalmaneser the third, the god Shomanu is preeminent, was king of the Neo Assyrian Empire from the death of his father Ashur Nasserpal. The second in 859 BC to his own death in 824 BC. His long reign was a constant series of campaigns against the eastern tribes, the Babylonians, the nations of Mesopotamia, Syria, as well as Kuzuwanda and Urartu. His enemies penetrated the Lake Van and the Taurus Mountains. The Neo Hittites, the Carchemish, were compelled to pay tribute, and the kingdoms of Hamath and Aram Damascus were subdued. It is in the annals of Shalmaneser III from the 850s BC that the Arabs and Chaldeans first appear in recorded history. You see that? So they keep saying that the Arabs and the Chaldeans first appear in recorded history. So I have a question. Gindabu, how is he related to Benadad? How is he related to Benadad? Yeah. He's not related He's to not. Benadad. He's okay. an Arab. Yeah, but Benadad as well, isn't he? From no, Syria? No. Benadad, he's, just, he's, he's a, a, a Syrian. Um, Damascus. He was ruling over Damascus. But um, they just came and joined alliance. He just he just gathered up that whole host of twelve kings to go against Shamanassar. But I haven't seen no relation as far as them. I haven't seen any relation. Read that again. All the way from the top. Yeah, I'm looking gotcha. for something. Go ahead, read it again. Uh, Shalmaneser III was king of the Neo-Assyrian Empire from the death of his father, Ashurnasipal II, in 859 B.C. to his own death in 824 B.C. His long reign was a constant series of campaigns against the eastern tribes, the Babylonians, the nations of Mesopotamia, Syria, as well as Kuzuwatna and Urartu. His, in his armies penetrated to Lake Van and the Taurus Mountains. The Neo-Hittites of Carchemish were compelled to pay tribute, and the kingdoms of Hamath and Aram Damascus were subdued. It is in the annals of Shalmaneser III from the 850s BC that the Arabs and Chaldeans first appear in recorded history. Go ahead. So that's, that's when the Arabs and the Chaldeans first appeared in recorded history. Remember, that's not the... the the first time the Arabs ever appeared in recorded history is the first time that an Arab king's name was mentioned, which was Gindibu. All right, which was Gindibu. Okay. Now, hey, give me that page real quick. You guys. Uh, in regards to the, the victory you were talking about. Yes. The, the black obelisk. Yeah, yep. Bring that up. King Jehu's Black Obelisk. During the period of Old Testament history from about 900 to 700 BC, the Assyrians were the dominant world power. One of the powerful Assyrian kings, Shalomaneser III, reigned 859 to 824 BC, uh -huh. erected a large stone monument on which he recorded his military victories. This impressive archaeological find, known as the Black Obelisk, contains a relief sculpture depicting a visit of King Jehu of Israel, reigned 841 to 814 B.C., to pay tribute to Salomonesser. Right, go ahead. Placed outside the royal palace at Nimrud in Assyria, the monument is more than six feet high. Chiseled carefully in stone is a series of detailed drawings with accompanying inscriptions that commemorate Shalmaneser's numerous military campaigns. The obelisk shows an event not mentioned in the Bible, Jehu bowing before Shalmaneser with numerous Israelite servants and aides standing mm. by with gifts for the Assyrian king. Right, so give me, now give me that, uh, that um, y'all know it, this, the, um, the relief that he's talking about. Is he able to keep reading while y'all look for that? All right, post it back up so we keep reading.
Yeah, go ahead. Tribute or compulsory. So you're not able to do that. Go ahead. Tribute or compulsory payments to protect a weaker nation against a more powerful foe was often levied by aggressor nations such as the Assyrians during Old Testament times. After being anointed king of Israel by the prophet Elisha, Jehu eliminated all threats to his rule by killing all members of the family of Ahab, whom he... You can drop that. Hey, give me uh, Second Chronicles uh, twenty one sixteen. Second Chronicles twenty one sixteen. <clears throat> the book of Second Chronicles, chapter twenty one and verse sixteen. Moreover, the Lord stirred up against. Read. Jer- um, start at verse. You can start from uh, 21 and 1. We'd, we'd jump around. Yes, sir. First Chron- Second Chronicles chapter 21 and verse 1. Now Jehoshaphat slept with his fathers and was buried with his fathers in the city of David. Now Jehoshaphat is gone. Jo- Jehoshaphat died, right? He's gone. Remember, you had the Arabs bringing tribute to Jehoshaphat. The Arabs were bringing tribute to Jehoshaphat. Go ahead. And Jerahim, his son, reigned in his stead. And he had brethren, the sons of Jehoshaphat. Azariah, uh-huh. and Jehiel, and Zechariah, and Azariah, and Michael, and Shephtiah. All these were the sons of Jehoshaphat, king of Israel. And their father gave them great gifts of silver and of gold and of precious things with fenced cities in Judah. But the kingdom gave heed to Jehoram, because he was the firstborn. Now when Jehoram was risen up to the kingdom of his father, he strengthened himself and slew all his brethren with the sword, Mm -hmm. and diverse also of the princes of Israel. Jerem was thirty and two years old when he began to reign, and he reigned eight years in Jerusalem. Read. And he walked in the way of the... So now we're dealing with Jerem, right? Go ahead. And he walked in the way of the kings of Israel, like as did the house of Ahab. For he had the daughter of Ahab to wife, and he wrought that which was evil in the eyes of the Lord. Howbeit, the Lord would not destroy the house of David because of the covenant that he had made with David. What verse you at? Verse 7. Read. And as he had promised to give a light to him and to his sons forever. In his days, the, Ke- the Edomites revolted from under the dominion of Judah. So in the days of Jeram, the Edomites, they revolted from him. They revolted from him. All right, go ahead. Read that again. In his days, the Edomites revolted from under the dominion of Judah and made themselves a king. And they made themselves a king. Hey, give me the page of uh, modern Judaism. Because what did they do? After they revolted from him and made themselves a king, what happened to Esau? What happened? The page modern Judaism. We read it last week. This goes back in reference to uh, the book Modern Judaism. Remember, the Bible is our first, as our main source. All right? Everything else is secondary source to the Bible. <clears throat> so, King, uh, the Edomites revolted under King Jeroboam, and they made themselves a king. Read that. First, that the descendants of Esau the sworn enemies of the descendant of Jacob, even to the end of the world, were at first a small nation, inhabiting Mount Seir and the adjacent country, contiguous to the land of Canaan, that they were easily confined within their own limits as long as the Israelites enjoyed a great and formidable empire in Canaan. Right, so from so we have from who? We have from King Solomon, from King David, all the way up to King Jehoshaphat, right? Go ahead. But... After, excuse me, but that after the powerful republic of the 12 tribes was destroyed by the Assyrians and Babylonians, they wonderfully increased in numbers and strength. You see that? That's what we read in here. This is when they left. Now read. Now go back to the uh, verse. verse. Go ahead. Read that again. And in his days, the Edomites revolted from under the dominion of Judah and made themselves a king. Then Jeroham went forth with his princes and all his chariots with him. All right, him. now go back to the page. 
that they were easily confined within their own limits, as long as the Israelites enjoyed a great and formidable empire in Canaan. But that after the powerful republic of the 12 tribes was destroyed by the Assyrians and Babylonians, uh-huh. they wonderfully increased in numbers and strength. Why? Because now, guess what? They made themselves a king. They was able to... They was, because the Jeroram was in evil, they revolted from under him, and they was able to make themselves a king and strengthen themselves. Go ahead. Extended their dominion towards the west. And then they extended their dominion towards the west. Read. Spread their colonies far and wide. And then they was able to spread their colonies. So after they revolted, now we going into the in-between history of what happened. So after they revolted from under Jeroram, guess what? They started to spread far and wide. They started to leave uh, Petra. That's where we held them at. Petra. But once once uh, Jeroram, once um, they revolted, they they started to, they gained their strength. All right? They increased in numbers, and they moved their colonies far and wide. Read on. Subjugated Italy. And they subjugated. They conquered Italy. Go ahead. Founded Rome and the Roman Empire. They founded Rome and the Roman Empire. Give me the other page, the dictionary. The dictionary. Give me the dictionary. Yep. Amalekites, a powerful people who dwelt in Arabia deserta between the Red and Dead Seas. They were the descendants of Amalek. A tradition prevails that a small number of the Amalekites colonized a part of Greece and were the stock whence the Macedonians and Spartans sprung. You see that? So a tradition prevailed that a small number of the Amalekites colonized a part of Greece. When did this happen? Read, read that again. In the days of the Edom, sorry, in his days, the Edomites revolted from under the dominion of Judah and made themselves a king. You see that? And made themselves a king. Once they did that, listen, they, Esau was moving. <laughs> Esau was making moves. This was their chance. They took the chance. They took the opportunity. They was out. They, was con- they started conquering. Okay. They started, uh, they made themselves a king. They spread, they spread their colonies. They went to Macedonia. All right. So they, was, they went to Italy. Okay, so all of this was taking place under when they revolted under Jeroham. All right, now go back to the scriptures. Verse 9. Then Jeroham went forth with his princes and all his chariots with him, and he rose up by night and smote the Edomites, which compassed him in, and the captains of the chariots. So the Edomites revolted from under the hand of Judah unto this day. So they revolted from that day forth. They revolted from under Jeroham. They revolted from under us. All right, we held, we had them confined in wherever they um, around Petra, in their in their area, we had them confined in that area, around Basra and those areas. All right, go ahead. The same time also did Libna revolt from under his hand, because he had forsaken the Lord God of his fathers. Moreover, he made high places in the mountains of Judah, and caused the inhabitants of Jerusalem to commit fornication, and compel Judah thereto. And there came a writing to him from Elijah, the prophet, saying, Thus saith the Lord God of David, thy father, because thou hast not walked in the ways of Jehoshaphat, thy father, nor in the ways of Asa, king of Judah, but hast walked in the way of the kings of Israel. What verse you at? Verse 13. Read. And hast made Judah and the inhabitants of Jerusalem to go a-whoring, like to the whoredoms of the house of Ahab, and has, and also hast slain thy brethren of thy father's house, which were better than thyself. Behold, with a great plague will the Lord smite thy people and thy children and thy wives and all thy goods. And thou shalt have a great sickness by disease of thy bowels until thy bowels fall out by reason of the sickness day by day. Damn. Listen, I don't know what the most I gave him. That sounded like some colon cancer or something. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. But it was incurable. Go ahead. I mean, it's going to say as you read on. But verse 16 is what we want. Verse 16. Moreover, the Lord stirred up against Jehoram the spirit of the Philistines. So of Ham, go ahead. And of the Arabians. And the Arabs. The Lord stirred up the spirit of Ham and Ishmael, the Arabs. Read. That were near the Ethiopians. Uh Uh-huh. And they came up into Judah. And did what? And brought and break it. Break into it. Oh, read that over. And they came up into Judah uh-huh. and break into it uh-huh. and carried away all the substance that was found in the king's house 
and his sons also, uh -huh. and his wives, so that there were never a son left him, save Jehoaz, the youngest of his sons. Listen, listen, listen. They did a raid. Ham and Ishmael did a raid on Judah, all right, on King Jerem, uh, on his household. All right, so they came up into Judah. They broke into Judah, and they did a raid. This is what is called a raid. And, and in the Bible, in my Bible, it says carried captive. All right. It said carry in the footnote. It says carried captive. That's what happened. Read that again. And they came up into Judah and break into it and carried away all the substance that was found in the king's house uh -huh. and his sons also and his wives so that there was never a son left him. Save Jehoaz, the youngest of his sons. Right. Save Jehoaz, the youngest of his sons. So what you're going to see as we move on throughout this history with Ishmael, you're going to see that. Ishmael and Ham was always confederate against one another. I mean, with one another against us. You're gonna, you're gonna see. All right, even when we get into Africa, you're gonna see that they were always against us, always making raids against us. All right, so this is this is one of the uh, first raids where you see Ham and Ishmael working together to come and take us. All right, give me the uh, Bible hub, the Bible hub. Bible Hub and put in uh, 2 Chronicles 21 and 16. Yep, go all the way down right here, right here. Let me see if that's what I want. Um, go down, go down. Uh, put it. Go to the parallel commentaries. Parallel commentaries. Yep. Hold on. Go down. Go down. Go down. Keep going. Let me see. That's what I want. All right, go back up. It says that there. Uh, yeah, read. Uh, start with it says the Philistines and of the. Ara yeah, right there. The Philistines and of the Arabians. Yeah, that's it. Yep. These are mentioned together elsewhere as enemies of Judah. <laughs> Read that again. The Philistines and of the Arabians. The Philistines and of the Arabians. Ishmael and Ham. Go ahead. These are mentioned together elsewhere as enemies of Judah. They were always our enemies. As enemies of Judah. As enemies of Judah. Go ahead. Uh, the invasion of the Philistines and Arabians. Watch this. They, what? The invasion of the Philistines and Arabians accords, accords with Joel chapter 3, verses 4 through 6. Listen, they know that they did it again in the prophecy of Joel. All right, read that one more time. Read that one more time. The Philistines and of the Arabians, these are mentioned together elsewhere as enemies of Judah. The invasion of the Philistines and Arabians accords with Joel chapter 3, verse 4 through 6. And it's certainly historical. And it's certainly what? Historical. Why? Because it actually happened. And it happened to us again in Africa. So they understand that. All right? So the scholars know that it was Ishmael and Ham. And we, we get into that later on. But this is the first time you see it happening here in the book of Second Chronicles. Read that again. Second Chronicles chapter 21 and verse 17, verse 16. Moreover, the Lord stirred up against Jehoram the spirit of the Philistines and of the Arabians that were near the Ethiopians. And they came up into Judah and break into it and carried away all the substance that was found in the king's house and his sons also and his wives, so that there were never a son left him, save Jehoaz, the youngest of his sons. Right. Read on, read on, read on. And after all this, the Lord smote him in his bowels with an incurable disease. And it came to pass that in the process of time, after the end of two years, his bowels fell out by reason of his sickness. 
So he died of sore disease, and, it, and his people made no mourning for him like the burning of his fathers. Thirty and two years old was he when he began to reign, right. and he reigned in Jerusalem eight years and departed without being desired. Howbeit they buried him in the city of David, but not in the sepulcher of the kings. Right. Now, give me Second Chronicles 26 and 1. Let me start there. Second Chronicles chapter 26, verse 1. Second Chronicles 26, verse 1. Second Chronicles chapter 26 and verse 1. Then all the people of Judah took Uzziah, who was 16 years old, and made him king in the room of his father Amaziah. So now we're dealing with King Uzziah. Go ahead. He built Eloth and restored it to Judah after that the king slept with his fathers. 17 years old was, he, was Uzziah when he began to reign. 16. Sorry, 16 years old was Uzziah when he began to reign. And he reigned 52 years in Jerusalem. His mother's name was Jecoliah uh -huh. of Jerusalem. And he did that which was right in the sight of the Lord, according to all that his father and Messiah did. And right, he, so saw, he kept the laws. Go ahead. And he saw God in the days of Zechariah, who had understanding in the visions of God. And as long as he sought the Lord, God made him to prosper. Read. And he went forth and warred against the Philistines. He went forth and did what? And warred against the Philistines. The Philistines is always a headache to us, man. They was just there. We was always fighting the Philistines. Go ahead. And break down the wall of Gath and the wall of Jebna and the wall of Ashdod and built cities about Ashdod and among, Ashdod. Ashdod. Ashdod and among the Philistines. And God helped them against the Philistines and, and against the, the Arabians. Arabians. Here they go again. Here they go again. So now we are warring against them. Go ahead. That dwelt in Gerbiel and Muhaniams. And the Ammonites gave gifts to Uzziah. And his name spread about even to the entering in of Egypt, for he strengthened himself exceedingly. Moreover, Uzziah built towers in Jerusalem. So read verse 7 again. Read verse 7 again. Verse 7. And God helped them against the Philistines and against the Arabians. Right. Because they was always a problem. Ishmael and Ham together, they were always a problem to us. Man. Remember, it said that they were our enemies. Okay? They were our enemies as well. That's why, they, that's why the Lord put them in Psalms 83. That's why they, they what? Third, fourth on the list. But they were always our enemies as well. Okay? So read it, read it again, verse 7. And God helped them against the Philistines and against the Arabians that dwelt in Gerbiah and the Mahuniums. Hey, so notice something about the Most High. During, now, during the campaign, during, uh, we read about Jeram, the Most High stirred them up against mm -hmm. us. Why? Because Jeram wasn't, he wasn't keeping the laws. Yep. He was in evil. But here, with um, Uzziah. Uzziah keeping God's laws, right, the Most High helped him against the Arabian, the Philistines. Okay? Give me that in, uh, Judah yeah, Judah 5 and 20. Judah 5 and 20. Because they was always coming against us. Either the Most High was going to stir them up to, uh, to beat us, or he was going to stir them, or he was going to, um, while he was keeping his laws, he was going to help us against them. Read that. The book of Judah, chapter 5 and verse 20. Now therefore, my Lord and governor, if there be any error in this people, and they <coughs> sin against their God, mm -hmm. let us consider that this shall be their ruin, and let us go up, and we shall overcome them. But if there be no iniquity in their nation, let my Lord now pass by. Lest their Lord defend them. You see that? Lest our Lord defend us. Read. And their God before them. And we become a reproach before all the world. Right. So during the time of Jeremiah, we became a reproach at that time. But now that we're keeping God's laws again under King Uzziah, now the Lord is helping us against them. Because they was always there. All right, go back. Second Chronicles 26. Yep. Second Chronicles chapter 26 and verse 7. And God helped them against the Philistines and against the Arabians that dwelt in Gerbal and Mahunims. And the Ammonites gave gifts to Uzziah, and his name spread abroad. Even <laughs> Damn, so even, even Ammon came, the so-called Japanese even came and gave gifts to us. Go ahead. And his name spread abroad even to the entering in of Egypt, 
for he strengthened himself exceedingly. Uh -huh. Moreover, Uzziah built towers in Jerusalem at the corner gate, and at the valley gate, and at the turning of the wall, and fortified them. Also he built towers in the desert, and digged many wells, for he had much cattle, both in the low country and in the plains, husbandmen also, and vine dressers in the mountains, and in Carmel, for he loved husbandry. Why? For he loved agriculture. For he loved agriculture. Go ahead. That's what husbandry is. Read. Moreover, Uzziah had an host of fighting men. So he strengthened himself. The Lord strengthened him to the point that he had a host of fighting men. Go ahead. That went out to war by bands, according to the number of their account, by the hand of Jael, the scribe of Messiah, the ruler, under the hand of Hananiah, uh -huh. one of the king's captains. And the whole number of the chief of the fathers of the mighty men of valor were 2,600. And under their hand was an army, 300,000 and 7,000 and 500, that made war with mighty power. That made war with what? With mighty power uh -huh. to help the king against the enemy. You see that? So the Philistines and Arabians, the Arabs, they couldn't stand against us at this time. They could not stand against us. Why? Because he was doing what was right. He was keeping God's laws. Go ahead. And Uzziah prepared for them throughout all the whole shields and spears and helmets and harbigans and bows and slings to cast stones. And he made all Jerusalem, sorry, and he made in Jerusalem engines invented by cunning men to be on the towers and upon the bulwarks to shoot arrows and great stones withal. Right, so we had our own battle rams and so forth. All right, we thinking other nations came out with that stuff. Nah, we was making that stuff. All right, we was making that stuff. Go ahead. And his name spread far abroad, for he was marvelously helped till he was strong. But when he was strong, his heart was lifted up to his destruction. For he transgressed against the Lord his God and went into the temple of the Lord to burn incense upon the altar of incense. So now pride took over. Go ahead. And Azariah the priest went in after him and went and, and with him four score priests of the Lord that were valiant men. And they withstood Uzziah the king and said unto him, It appertaineth not unto thee, Uzziah, to burn incense unto the Lord, but to the priests, the sons of Aaron, that are consecrated to burn incense. Go out of the sanctuary, for thou hast trespassed. Neither shall it be for thine honor from the Lord God. Then Uzziah was wroth, and had a censer in his hand to burn incense. And while he was wroth with the priest, the leprosy even rose up in his forehead Damn. before the priest in the house of the Lord, from beside the incense altar. And Azariah the chief priest and all the priests looked upon him, and behold, he was leprous in his forehead. And they thrust him out from thence. Yea, himself hasted also to go out. <laughs> he, yo, he ran up out of there too. Because he knew he wasn't supposed to be doing what he was doing. Offering sacrifices. Go ahead. Because the Lord had smitten him. And Uzziah the king was a leper until the day of his death. And dwelt in the several house. Being a leper. For he was cut off from the house of the Lord. And Jothan his son was over the king's house. Judging the people of the land. Now the rest of the acts of Uzziah. First and last. Did Isaiah the prophet, the son of Amos, write? So Uzziah slept with his fathers, and they buried him with his father in the field of the burial which belonged to the kings. Uh -huh. For they said, he is a leper, and Jotham his son reigned in his stead. Right. Now, give me the page. Uh, Nam Slotes travels in North Africa. Let's want this page real quick. We're going to end it here. Start out for the people. Yeah, you can start there. For the people of Gath have remained. Above all the people of Jalut. The so enemy, I'm just reading this now, but we're going to use it again later. We're going to use it again later. Go ahead. The enemies of the people of David. The Majmuda and the robbers of the West are part Philistine and part Amalekite. So and, this is in North Africa. This is in North Africa. Go ahead. And But that's not what I want. I want to get to another part. Go ahead. And it is as such that they are spoken of in the writings of Ibn, Ibn Ezra, etc., they are the hereditary enemies of Israel. They're who? Hereditary enemies of Israel. So he's saying that the Philistines, the Amalekites, and also going to mention the Arabs are the what? Hereditary enemies of Israel. They are our hereditary enemies. Go ahead. They cannot forget 
where Amalek suffered at the time of the exodus from Egypt. So this is talking about Amalek now. So they, they can't forget what happened in the time of the exodus from Egypt. Go ahead. Or the inflictions put upon them by the first two leaders of Israel. Mm -hmm. To these tribes isolated in the desert, their traditions. This is in Africa now. This is in Africa. Go ahead. Their traditions handed down from generation to generation by word of mouth. So a lot of these uh, tribes in, that's in Africa right now, the uh, Hamites, the uh, Ishmaelites, and so forth, their uh, history is handed down to them about oral tradition, word of mouth. Go ahead. Our reality itself, they bridge over time and space, making these peoples one with their ancestors of a thousand years ago. Read that part again. Uh, to these tribes isolated in the desert, their traditions handed down from generation to generation by word of mouth. Uh -huh. Our reality itself. They bridge over time and space. So they bridge over time and space, read. Making these peoples one with their ancestors of a thousand years ago. So, so they make themselves one with their ancestors over a thousand years ago, read. And bringing together tribes from the ends of the desert. Uh-huh. And. This is what I want. As with the Arabs of old. And as with the Arabs of old, read. It is always the ingenious biblical account from which the genealogical list of the native, native tribes, tribes are derived uh -huh. and which determine their sympathies, their loves, Love and, and their hates. hates. So all the nations, letting you know that all the nations got to go back to the Bible to read about the genealogy. That's what it's telling you. Read that again. Read it again. One more time. And as. And as with the Arabs of old, it is always the ingenious biblical account from which the genealogical lists of the native tribes are derived. He says the ingenious biblical account from which what? From which the genealogical lists of the native tribes are derived. You see that? So it's the, it's the ingenious biblical account from which the genealogical lists of the native tribes, read on, are derived. And which determine their sympathies, their loves, and their hates. So I'll let you know that all the nations can go back to the Bible and read about themselves. <laughs> How they gained that hate that they had for us today. <laughs> all they gotta do is go back to the Bible. That's what it's saying. All right. So I'm going to end it there. I'm going to end it there and uh, we continue with the Arab. We're going to go more in depth with the Arab. We're going to move on to, uh, we're dealing with the Assyrian captivity. We're going to go to the Babylonian. We're going to go through each captivity of who the Arabs were. All right. So we're going to end it right there. Go ahead. Hey, Israel, let's give a hand for the Lord for that class. All praise the most high. All praises. Let's get to the announcements. All right. Israel, remember, subscribe to Our Hidden History Radio on YouTube. Hit the notifications button so you know when we go live. All right? Also, subscribe to our IYC, IYC Philly channels, IYC Philadelphia and IYC Philadelphia in the Classroom to get exclusive content from the officers and captain and officers of IYC Philly. Also, subscribe to our Instagram page, Our Hidden History Radio, all right, to get some content from the shows that you might have missed. Go on Instagram, type in Our Hidden History Radio. Also, donate to Our Hidden History on PayPal to iyc.philadelphia at israelunite.org. In the comment section, put OHH. You can donate to the Booster Club on PayPal to iyc.fundraising at israelunite.org. Subscribe to IUIC TV to get exclusive content from the leadership of IUIC. And tune in next to Deacon Malafaya on Raven and Wolves. <laughs> Right. IUIC missing persons. We are looking for Morgan Key. All right. She is 16 years old, uh, African American, hair color black, eye color brown, about 5'4, 120 pounds. Uh, where is that? Morgan was last seen on February 12th. March. Sorry, March 12th. No clothing description given. All right. Deuteronomy 28 41. Thou shalt beget sons and daughters, but thou shalt not enjoy them, for they shall go into captivity. So if you see or know of her whereabouts, make sure you uh, look, uh, sorry, make aware of the local authorities and give the information, all right? My bad, man. Yeah, this guy crazy, man. He posting, he posting pages now in the class over. Oh, man. gosh. <laughs> <laughs> I just want extra credit point. <laughs> go ahead. <laughs> All right, we're seeking your I mean, assistance. Now the show's over. You want to post up some some pages? <laughs> go ahead, go ahead. 
We're seeking your assistance, assistance to enhance our national broadcast. Kindly spare a minute to provide feedback by answering five brief questions. So go ahead and pull out your phone. You can hit the QR code and give your feedback. All right? Uh, that's it, I'll suggest. I'm going to be nice today. <laughs> <laughs> go ahead. Go ahead. Say your piece. Hey, you know, if you, you want to name some names, uh, there's always the Northeast Region Officer <laughs> Manual. Officer <laughs> Manual. Thank you, sir. Oh, great work. Yo, also. put the camera on them. Yo, yeah, put if the camera on just so them. you know. <laughs> you have a face to reference the name if they do ask. There are many officer manuals, but there is one officer manual. So. Dang. All right, they're all pretty. <laughs> hey, hey, uh, shout out to IT, man. Shout out to IT. All praises. <laughs> officer Amos. <laughs> officer Amos. <laughs> officer Me Dad. You see the why? He pulled his head out like. <laughs> no, don't, don't, don't miss me. <laughs> Say my name. Say my name. All right, and uh, shout out to the Scissor for that wonderful breakfast, man. All praise to the most high. All praise. All right. Hey, so tune in uh, next week, Lord's Will, Life Last. Um, hey, we got Passover. Matter of fact, yeah, we got Passover. That's right. Right. Yep, right. Yep, we got Ooh. Passover. That's All right. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. All right, so if we don't see y'all next week, then the week after, all right? Life lasts. All right, we're going to continue with the Arabs, all right? The Arabs, um, Islam, and the uh, Trans-Saharan slave trade, okay? So with that, we're going to see you. Happy Passover, Israel. Shalom, Mosiah, and Christ bless. Shalom, Mosiah, and Christ Christ bless. 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 bless.